Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Canopy Ranch. Uh, this morning, we're headed out across the creek and we're gonna do a little bit of fencing. Well, got some fencing needs replaced. For those of you that don't know, like when, when two ranchers have land that borders each other, um, if you look at, if you're standing on, it's like if you were standing in our pasture and you're looking at the fence that borders between two uh, ranchers, the, from the center point, the right half would be our half if you're standing in our pasture. And then from the neighbor's point of view, if he was standing looking at the fence from his pasture, it'd be the right half, it'd be his half. So for those of you that don't know, that's kind of how uh, joint fences work. So we're going out to replace our half. Um, we're gonna, but we gotta go tear it out. So dad just started the bobcat. He's gonna grab the post puller. And then we gotta grab, uh, we've got that wire roller that uh, you might remember from last summer, I think we did some fencing. Um, so we got to get those two things. We're going to load one of them in the pickup, throw one on the Bobcat, and then we're going to head out there and start tearing out some old fence. So that plate is a plate that's it's an adapter from skid steer to a three point hitch. So this is meant for a three point hitch. So that plate allows us to put that, we can put that plate on there, then we can hook a bobcat up to it um, instead of like putting it on the three point on the back of a tractor. So this concrete mixer and then our wire roller has a three point hitch as well. So we can use this adapter plate to use it with the skid steer instead of the back of a tractor. It's just more convenient to use a skid steer. So I haven't videoed much in like the last three weeks, which you guys can probably tell because there hasn't been a video uh, in the last three weeks or a month. Um, that's just mainly because we really haven't been doing much. It's been really hot for like the last three weeks, you know, high 90s. And then there's a lot of days where it was 100 and plus 100 degrees. We had like three or four 105 degree days just hot and miserable you know and a guy really doesn't do much uh, when it's hot and miserable you go out in the morning really early um, get three or four hours of work in and then that's about it then you just stay inside the rest of the day because it's so hot and miserable you really don't want to do nothing but now uh, this week it has been 80s and 
mid 70s all week today is supposed to be mid 80s and tomorrow is supposed to be high 70s and a good like a 70 percent chance of rain all day long so it's been a really good week to get stuff done um i know dad's been working here at home uh cole and i cole's still home and we uh cole went to work with me this summer so we have we both have a full-time job um doing construction work uh so we've been pretty busy with that so we really haven't had a chance to do much at home but now it's saturday so we're gonna try to get some stuff done here at home uh, before some more hot weather next week it's supposed to be like low 90s which is not terrible but it's really not fun either so so grandpa got all the clips off already so all we got to do is roll it up and then we'll pull all the posts so we got our first wire hooked up here So I don't know about you guys, but uh, let me know in the comments below. The grasshoppers have been terrible here this summer. So it's been destroying our garden, our vegetable garden, uh, obviously getting into alfalfa and stuff. Uh, luckily we had all the hay we wanted to, all the hay we wanted to cut and put up, we had all done before the grasshoppers really got uh, too big and destructive. So we got lucky in that aspect of it but they're still around, they're still destroying gardens and they're just a mess. So let me know in the comments, are the grasshoppers bad um, where you guys live? It started getting really hot and uh, like in the 100 degrees plus weather and we started to get really dry, like beginning of July, kind of just stopped raining. Um, so all through June we were nice and wet, and cool and it was gorgeous summer. Then we get to July, it started getting really dry. So. The creek is dry and we've got massive cracks in the ground. Grandpa was saying that he's heard before, if it gets this dry, you don't want to work on equipment out in the pasture unless you absolutely have to. Because if you drop a wrench, you'll never find it again. <laughs> Looks like dad's got the first wire completed. He's gonna come back. We're gonna hook onto another one and head back down. Uh, he said he thought he could get about a half mile of fence on one roll off of that thing. So we're hoping to get two strands of wire. Ready? 
okay and just like that we've got a perfectly rolled up spool of a uh, half a mile of fence right there all right last wire tied on and we'll get that rolled up then we can start pulling the posts puller uh, dad bought somewhere but this post puller he made homemade so it's just got a cylinder this side is stationary and that cylinder moves that side in and out you just pinch the post grab it pinch post pull it out so dad made this homemade um, but the uh, the wire roller I think he bought on an auction or somewhere but So Cole and I are following along behind Dad. Dad's pulling them, and we're throwing uh, five-foot posts. We don't want to keep; they're junk. So we're putting them in the back of the pickup, and then old wooden, rotted wooden posts, throwing them in the back of the pickup, and we're taking them back in uh, to the place there so that we can use them for other things. But when we do fencing, we like to use five and a half or six-foot steel posts. And then any of the wooden posts we'll replace with uh, railroad ties. We have a bunch of old railroad ties that we use for those. So. Got all the posts pulled, so now we can come out here and drill posts or corner posts. We'll have to bring the post hole digger out and do that. Then we can string our wires and get all of our posts put in. We'll have a new half of a fence. And most of them are facing that way, the sun's that way pretty efficient way to save the planet.
so from sliding the forks in this end and the forks getting caught and stuff and stuff binding uh, these posts back here were starting to get bent out so we straightened them back up and now I got some braces on them to hopefully keep them straight brace them straight now uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I welded these things on quick and in a hurry one day these two pieces of C channel and they're not long enough to catch the front of the barrel when it sits in there um, to keep it from sliding forward so I'm gonna I welded I'm gonna weld this on here to hold it and then I've got to put those two posts I'm gonna run this way on top of these three uh, cross posts there so that uh, then that'll keep the barrel from going it was falling over that last post it was falling there and the weight of the water was kind of making it buckle the barrel buckle in the middle so I've just been using those wood deals but I don't have a good way of fastening them wood things so I'm gonna put these posts on there uh, to support the back of the barrel so that it stays straight and true so I'm gonna wet, get this stuff welded up and then uh, get the barrel thrown back on there fill it up take it back over to the pigs got it all on there so I got them rails on there so then the butt or the barrel can sit on those got my braces off these back legs and I got this front piece here that holds the bucket on there so should be good to go now I'm gonna take it out to the hydrant put some water on those welds so they cool down faster which I don't know if that's right or not but I'm gonna do it because it's just big water and then and then I can throw the barrel back on a little faster, get the pigs water a little faster. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's the next day now. And uh, it's supposed to rain today. It's supposed to start raining at like 11 o'clock today and then rain through most of the afternoon, I think. So uh, I'm going to try to get some stuff done here um, before it starts raining. Uh, the first thing on my list is I need to uh, fill my pigs' grain feeder. So I'm going to throw the bucket on the bobcat here, go down and get a um, bunch of buckets of Milo, and then we'll take them up here and put them in their uh, feeder for them so they'll be set. Nice and cool out this morning. I got my buckets of Milo and uh, what I've been doing is I've been mixing a little soybean meal in with them um, their Milo so uh, I just kind of eyeball it I guess and just give them I don't know about half of one of these little flower pot scoops of soybean meal per bucket Just kind of eyeball it, see what I think, I guess. So like, earlier this summer, I was giving them less soybean meal because Obviously they're grazing grass. So when the grass was a lot greener this spring and early summer when it was actually raining and stuff still, uh, I didn't have to give them as much soybean meal because they would get a lot of protein from the grass itself. But now that the grass is kinda um, starting to die out and it's getting drier, kinda suck 
supplementing that. Put more soybean meal in for them so they can get more protein. So I've been working the pigs through this bottom uh, all summer long, just with electric fence. So they've got their shelter, they can go in the barn there. Uh, that's where their water is. And then they've also obviously got their grain feeder right here. Um, then a, a permanent pen there. And then this electric fence is what I've been running them with all summer. I've had really good luck with it. Um, I've been giving them a piece and moving them every week or so, giving them a new piece. So uh, this is where we started with here. We haven't had much rain to see any uh, regrowth really. So we haven't really had the, the right conditions to see uh, how the regrowth is going to be um, after pigs come through, which I'm really curious to see because I want to be able to compare, you know, I want to see the pieces where they hit it harder, does that grow back better? Or the pieces where I leave more grass, does that grow back better? So right now I'm just kind of waiting. Hopefully we get more rain and I can kind of see some regrowth and see the impact that the pigs had um, is what I'm kind of hoping for. Uh, but I've been trying to leave a decent amount of grass. So as you can see, they really, they don't do much for rutting. Um, a lot of the rutting action is up where they are right now is kind of where they they dig um, but down here it's really not too bad obviously they're pigs and it's in their nature to rut um, but they're not digging huge holes they're not um, taking out a lot of grass so as you can see under the trees here where it's cool and they spent most of their time there's a little bit of rutting uh, right in there uh, but for the most part this piece I gave them was uh, you can kind of see where I had the fence right here bent around to there. So th this is all one big piece and that's the only rutting action I had from the pigs. Other than that, it's just eaten. So they kind of trim just the heads off the grass. They kind of just eat the seeds off the grass and they, and then, uh, I mean, they'll eat the whole grass too, but I've been really impressed. That, that's the one thing I was really worried about is how much rutting action I was gonna have from them. Uh, but it really hasn't been too bad, uh, just keeping them moving. So this is the piece they're in right now. They've been in this piece for a week. So we've got some rutting action and they've cleared out a lot of this under the trees, which I'm guessing they like being under the trees just because uh, of the shade uh, from the sun and it keeps them cool. So they spend most of their time there. And I think that's why 
a lot of the grass is gone from under the trees. So then, uh, this is part of the same piece they're in right now. And as you can see, they really haven't done much through this grass here. A little bit on that hillside there, they've ate off some of that, and they've ate off some of that over there. But this right here, they really haven't hit that hard. Um, so, yeah, like I said, if we, if we had a little more rain, um, a little cooler weather, uh, better conditions uh, for grass to regrow easier, um, I'd be able to see a lot more of the impact that they're having. But as of right now, I'm probably just going to have to wait till next spring and early summer to kind of see uh, what I should do for next summer as far as moving them, whether I should have them eating it off uh, a decent amount, leaving some grass, or just barely hitting it, leaving a lot of grass. Uh, it's, I don't know. So we do the rotational grazing with our cattle, and that's kind of what got me started on the idea of trying to do it with my pigs, move them through. So with the cattle, a lot of it is the hoof, the uh, hoof action. So obviously, pigs are fairly large animals, but they're not the size of a cow, and uh, I don't have as many of them as I do cows. So it brings up a lot of questions as like whether I should be putting them in smaller paddocks that they can hit harder, faster, and then get them out of there, or what I should do with them. But I guess they're putting on weight, so. I'm pretty happy with them. So these two here are females. And then I've got this little male here, and he was a lot smaller than them to begin with, but now he's he's really catching up, and he's been putting on a lot of weight here in the last month or so. So they're looking pretty good, and I'm pretty happy with how they're growing. Uh, so hopefully next spring I can kind of discover and uh, really look into how this how my grass is going to recover um, after pigs have been through it. So all right, guys, with that I think that's just about gonna do it for this video. So thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one.